Oh, hey, dude. Get over here. What do you got? <laughs> it's a helmeted turtle. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. We're in Togo, checking the size of this creek for Africa's longest lizard, which is named after Africa's longest river. That lizard, the Nile Monitor, and hopefully we'll find one basking on the bank. The locals do say they see Nile Monitors, but they don't see very big ones anymore, which is not much of a surprise because big ones are valued for their skin and for their meat, whether it be a food market or a voodoo market. Oh, hey, dude, get over here. What do you got? <laughs> it's a helmeted turtle. I think you killed your mic in the water. Hang on, let's get to the okay. side. Okay. Check, check, are we good? All right, sorry about that. A little collateral damage in the process of catching this guy, but totally worth it. So this is an African side neck turtle. These guys can be a lot of fun. This particular species is the hinged side neck turtle. It's called that because like a box turtle, it can close up its shell. They're a pretty popular turtle in the United States and with good reason. Great, great personality, not shy. And uh, they got funny big heads, so what's not to like about that? Another great thing about side neck turtles is their size. This is about as big as they get in comparison with the red ear slider that gets massive. Unlike red ear sliders that are restricted in many areas because they're invasive, side necks aren't. So you can keep these in almost all the states. In fact, all of them that I know of. Also, as you can tell, they're not bashful. They'll swim right up to the side of the tank to greet their owners. So it's another redeeming factor of the African side neck turtle. Now, side neck turtles in South Africa I'm very familiar with. They'll often eat hippopotamus poop and they stink terribly. Luckily, these guys don't eat nearly as much poop so they don't stink as bad. No smell. Good filtration, you should be good to go. Couple other notes about these turtles. You do find them in creeks like this, you find them in lakes, and you'll even find them in floodplains. They're only wet part of the year and dry up and then they bury into the mud. So they can actually survive in areas where the water is only seasonal. They're just really hardy turtles, which is what makes them well adapted for captivity. I'm gonna put them back where I found them. All right, little dude. Such a cool animal, but he's not the one we came here for. So I've got to find where I threw my hook and get back onto the hunt for the Nile monitor. I think it's over there somewhere. You might remember last season, us looking for the water monitor in kind of a similar situation. That's because water monitors and Nile monitors do inhabit fairly similar niches in their habitat. They're both large monitor lizards. They both like large basking sites by water. This is what we know as convergent evolution two animals that adapt to similar situations so they have similar traits. So I'm checking these riverbanks for places that now monitors might be trying to hide. You've got these big flat rocks for basking. You've got actually pretty deep water. They'll swim around during the day. They'll take advantage of it to cool off. They're very aquatic. There's a lot of snails, a lot of shrimp, lots of little places to hide and lots of little things to eat. This is perfect juvenile Nile monitor habitat right here. A lot of this vegetation, they'll be hiding right here and the roots right here, even the branches over my head. So you pretty much have to look in every direction if you want to spot them. And unfortunately, they're very alert. They're acute animals. And if they're heated up, they'll see you before you see them. That's why it's great to look for them at the beginning or the end of the day where they've chilled out a bit and you might have a better chance of catching them. There's one right on that palm. I got it, I got it. It got me too though. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
That's right. Let go, buddy. There you go. Wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> Check it out. It's Africa's longest lizard. Wow. You forget how pretty they are when they're this young. <laughs> and feisty, look at that. Ah, it's okay, dude, you can't hurt me, it's all right. Wow, look at that pattern. They're gorgeous. Look at those alert eyes. Just really taking in all the senses, looking, tasting the air, much like a snake. Listening, these are awesome micro predators at this size, but he'll get much bigger. They aren't compact for very long at all. The biggest monitor in all of Africa, named after the longest river. These guys are no petite little gecko. Well, I want to grab my bag and get measurements right where I found them. All right. Well, he's getting a little squirmy. I don't want to stress him out, so I'm going to let him go right now. I kind of don't want to. I'm having fun with him, but there's no reason to uh, cause him any more uh, stress than we have to. So one quick observation about the habitat that can apply to captivity. Here you have different basking levels. Closer to the water, it's gonna be cooler than higher up on the top of the rocks. So do the same thing in captivity, but do make sure that there is an option to escape the heat altogether. Also, there's a lot of places for these guys to hide, and all these hiding spots are important for them to feel secure and not stressed. I also see a lot of branches for them to climb on, so climbing areas are a must. And finally, there's a good source of clean water here. They need clean water, and they appreciate a lot of it. This little creek side is pretty awesome. Wow, that was fun. Nile monitors, what a pretty lizard. Lives with a really cool little turtle, lots of fish. Man, this would be a cool backyard. <laughs>